Okay. There you go. Good to go. And did you let everyone in? Yep. Great. All right, Mr. Secretary, whoever you are, please call the roll. Ludwig? Here. Robinson? Here. Del Vecchio? Here. Whitaker? Here. Goodman? Here. Page? Here. Dreyer? Here. Thank you. Everybody is in attendance. Wow. Great. Wow. Um, I don't think we've received the minutes. Uh, no. Okay, very good. Um, was this meeting duly advertised? It was duly advertised in the daily record of April 14th, 2022. Very good. That meeting will now be held. We have no communications. We have no designation of landmarks. Uh, first item on the agenda, certificate of appropriateness, 4H-01-22, application of Angela Pichirillo, uh, Pichirillo, owner of property at 332 South Landing Road, tax number 138.05-2-77 for certificate of appropriateness to install a six foot fence in the rear yard. Uh, and I apologize if I did not pronounce your name correctly. Is there anyone here to speak on that? Yes, she, was, she is here. Okay, you see your chef? Yep. Go ahead, Angie. Um, I'm here. Uh, I think I, I sent uh, some pictures and information um, perhaps everything that you need to know. So I would just be here to answer a question um, or add something if it was necessary. Thank you, Angie. This is very good. Uh, I think we've got a very good indication of what you want to do. Um, does the commission have any questions? No. I don't. Anyone else? No. Nope. Very good. <clears throat> Ken, would you like to propose an, uh, a motion? Sure. Is the public hearing closed now? Uh, is there anyone uh, to speak on this? I guess not. So the public hearings are closed. Thank you, Jerry. So I would propose the following uh, resolution. Whereas application number 4H-01-22 has been submitted for a certificate of appropriateness under the town's historic preservation law for improvement to property located at 332 Landing Road South in the town of Brighton, owned by Angela Picacaro, that's P-I-C-H-I-C-H-E-R-O. Thank you. <laughs> to perform work described as the replacement of a four foot chain link fence with a six foot aluminum ornamental fence. And whereas the Historic Preservation Commission duly called a public hearing to consider this matter on a, April 28th, 2022. And whereas the necessary legal notice has been published and the required sign posted pursuant to town code. <laughs> And whereas the public hearing was held and all persons having an interest in such matter having had an opportunity to be heard therein. And whereas the Historic Preservation Commission hereby determines that pursuant to the factors set forth in section 224-5 of the town code that the proposed above described work to the subject property is consistent with the purposes of the town's historic preservation law and compatible with the town's historic character based upon its review of the application and documents on file and received at the public hearing and the testimony presented at the public hearing. It is hereby resolved that the Historic Preservation Commission hereby receives and files the above described application and supporting papers. And it is further resolved mm -hmm. 
that the Historic Preservation Commission hereby approves application number 4H-01-22 for a certificate of appropriateness for the above described work to be performed at the property located at 332 Landing Road South in the town of Brighton, subject to the condition that the above described work be completed within one year from the date of this approval. Thank you, Ken. May I have someone put forth the motion, please? I'll make a motion. Please thank you, it. David. May I have a second? I second. I'll second that. Uh, thank you, Diana. Uh, any discussion? Is it, is it a, a great improvement over what was there? Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Yeah, I agree. And thanks for the um, thorough application. You're welcome. Then, uh, Jeff, would you call the vote, please? Yep. Ludwig? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Delvecchio? Yes. Goodman? Yes. Whitaker? Yes. Page? Yes. Dreyer? Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you all. Next item, 4H-02-22, application of Amanda and Michael Dreer, owner of property at 1300 French Road, tax number 150.09-1-8 for a certificate of appropriateness to install an AC unit in the side yard. All as described on application and documents on file. Now, uh, Ken, you mentioned uh, yesterday that uh, this uh, air conditioning compressors and generators were soon to be uh, eliminated from our uh, purview. You want to bring us up to date on that, please? Sure. Just as a point of information, um, first, let me just comment on the fact that Obviously, Amanda Dreyer is a member of the Historic Preservation Commission. Amanda, I assume you're the one who's making the presentation on this application tonight. Is that correct? Yes. And so just for the record, I want to make it clear that uh, Ms. Dreyer is <laughs> presenting as a homeowner, not as a member of the Historic Preservation Commission, and she will not be participating in the decision or discussion regarding this other than as a presenter and homeowner on this application, correct, Amanda? Yes. So um, last night at the Brighton Town Board meeting, the Town Board uh, enacted the um, 2022 Technical Code Amendments, which included an amendment to the Town Code provisions relative to certificates of appropriateness which would make it no longer necessary to get a certificate of appropriateness for the installation of an air conditioning unit, such as the one that is being proposed in this application. However, that law is not effective until it is filed in Albany. And since it was just passed last night, it is not yet filed in Albany and will not be filed in Albany. Uh, for a couple days. Um, I do think, uh, Amanda, that you have the option of proceeding with your application and seeking approval this evening under the certificate of appropriateness application you filed, or simply um, asking that it be tabled to wait for the law to go into effect, at which point in time it will be moot and you don't need a certificate of appropriateness. But that choice is completely up to you. Um, I, I believe that I agree on the condenser, but I would think that, <clears throat> um, they, uh, depending on your interpretation, Ken, that we would have the desire and responsibility to look at anything that was affixed to the house, which is part of this proposal and is in, in many ways, the one that's, you know, most of most interest 
it's somewhat similar to a situation that happened at the um, <clears throat> apartments on Monroe Avenue. Well, um, the way that the local law reads that was passed last night, it is air conditioning units, generators, heat pumps, and all related equipment would not require the installate the uh, issuance of a certificate of appropriateness. So if a homeowner is doing something is there, that is not related to the installation of an air conditioning unit, yes, I would agree. That would not come under the purview of the new amended local law. But if it is simply related equipment that goes along with the air conditioning unit, whether it's affixed to the house or not is irrelevant. Cool. I think that makes sense. And uh, one less obstacle for people of historic homes to uh, one less hoop for them to jump through. So, um, Amanda, I will say, Ken, yeah. were there any? Were, I have a question. Were there any conditions as to front of the house, side of the house, any location? Uh, so the air, so the installation of the unit still needs to be in compliance with other provisions of the town code. Yes. So side setback requirements still okay. um, apply. Generators still need to be placed behind the principal building on the property, um, not in the side yard. So those provisions of the code would still apply. All that the local law did with respect to certificates of appropriateness is eliminate that one procedural step, getting a certificate of appropriateness. Which I think Which is, is a fine thing. Yeah, which is what Amanda's here to do. So really, again, I'll, I'll uh, ask you, Amanda, it's your call. Um, that's what we uh, talked about yesterday during our pre-meeting um, with uh, Jerry and Ramsey and Jeff was, um, it's your call. Uh, if you wanna proceed, then we proceed. If you want to table, then we table and um, you won't need a certificate of appropriateness within a matter of a few days which means you won't have to post the property. Won't have to post the property, what do you? Well, if you apply for a certificate of appropriateness, you will need to put up, uh, you will come in, get an application. She's uh, already done that though. Oh, okay, you've got that, so. You yeah, won't, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're looking at tonight. And and um, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm here, we can proceed. Um, my contractor is eager to get going as soon as my roof is replaced, which should be done within a few days. So just okay. in case it takes Albany a few extra days to do something, which is not out of the realm of possibility, um, I think it's fine to go ahead. And then I, I believe he already secured a permit um, and we would be ready to go. So um, we'll, we'll, we can proceed. Great. Well, now that it's uh, 30 degrees at night, um, I think we should. Uh, okay, very good. Uh, Ken, would you put forth a motion then, please? Well, actually, I think we uh, need to have a presentation. Any, uh, any discussion? Let's let's have a presentation by Amanda first. Uh, oh, okay. If she has anything to share and see if there's any comments uh, from anyone else at the meeting. Very good. good well, point. so... Um, we have a, uh, a boiler, of course, hot water heat, and we uh, do not have currently have any air conditioning. We've been using window units. And based on the size of the house, the placement of the windows, um, the placement of the closets, we determined that the best, the best option for us was to do a traditional, uh, I guess, traditional duct work for air conditioning in the attic. Um, and with the condenser outside. Um, I did meet with several contractors, looked at high velocity systems, looked at ductless mini splits. Uh, shockingly in 1895, when my house was built, they did not know about these things. So <laughs> I don't have space for mini splits and um, I, I just, it's not, nothing else is a really good solution. So this is the best solution we have for cooling the second floor, which requires uh four window units to cool the areas that we use and we are unable to cool the bathrooms and a large room off the master bedroom because of uh 
because of the windows, um, they're uh, not double hung windows. So um, this would allow us to um, uh, pipe cool air into the ceiling vents. And we have uh, plenty of room in the attic um, for the ductwork. And our closets are large enough to, to run traditional ductwork down to the first floor later if we need it. Um, however, using two window units on the first floor um, has somewhat worked. So for now, we're just proceeding with the second, uh, the second floor. Um, the placement of the condenser unit is really limited um, based on where we can run the, the lines. Unfortunately, the lines cannot be run um, inside the house coming out of the basement, which is what we were hoping for. There's just um, due to the placement of chimneys, um, there really isn't, isn't a spot. Um, on the south side of the house, we're replacing the condenser unit is the side of the house that um, back to the office park. Uh, there's substantial you know, trees between us and the office park. So not even the office park will be able to see it. And we're actually no longer even going to use that side of the driveway once we build the garage next month. So this is the side of the house that will rarely be seen by by anyone. Um, we are set far back from the road, as you can see, and as you know, and um, it is really a minimal, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a minimal impact. Um, any future owner could remove the condenser unit. Um, on the outside, I did, my contractor did give me a piece of the, you can see, it's basically looks like a piece of gutter. Um, it's about four inches. Um, and this is what the lines would be encased in. And they, he's going to bring it down um, from the corner of the gable in the attic where it can just go, go straight down into the condenser. Yes, right there. Thank you, Jeff. Um, that is uh, a, a good spot in the attic, a good, really a good spot where it's going to have minimal, um, you know, it's not going to be an, any sort of strange path down. Um, and that uh, there's really nothing in that area. We, we may do some plantings later on um, as a, a further phase of our landscaping, but, um, but for now it will be somewhat shielded during the summer because, the, because of the plantings in the, in the front once they fill out. Um, that is a lilac tree there that is filling out um, quite a bit these days. So, um, so I guess that's it, if, unless anyone has any questions. Amanda, that sounds, that sounds great. Um, we did the same thing a bunch of years ago before we were designated, I might add. Um, and the downspout idea for hiding the condensing lines is perfect. And if you decide you do want the first floor done, then a separate unit in the basement is what we ended up doing. We, so. we, we would love to do that. Unfortunately, we have a finished, we have finished basement. Um, it's the ceiling is not actually, uh, is not uh, finished. It's open to the beams. Um, and I'm not sure if there's a way we could get ductwork in there that wouldn't impair our use of it, but, um, but it, is, it is an option. It is an option for the future. Well, I think you'll, given the status of, uh, the climate these days, I'm sure you'll be able to enjoy certainly the second floor and a lot of the time uh, the air filters down. So that will make a, uh, a big difference even on the first floor. So well done. That's, that's what I'm hoping for, thank you. Any other comments? Nothing, <laughs> okay. Um, Anyone from outside of our commission like to make a comment? Then, see anybody. Go ahead. I don't see anybody else. In, in... Okay, then uh, I'd like to close the hearings. Um, Ken, would you prepare a motion, please? Yes, thank you, uh, Jerry. Um, <clears throat> whereas application Number 4H-02-22 has been submitted for a certificate 
of appropriateness under the town's historic preservation law. I'm just gonna take a break here and take a sip of water. Sorry, folks. <laughs> For improvement to property located at 1300 French Road in the town of Brighton, owned by Amanda and Michael Dreyer, to perform work described as the construction and installation of a three foot by three foot concrete pad properly prepared with stone underneath and the installation of a air conditioning condenser unit to sit on the pad between the two basement windows on the north side of the house and the installation of condenser lines which will run out from the soffit below the roof line near the corner of the gable and down to the condenser unit which lines will be contained inside a four inch piece of gutter like gutter like material that will be painted to blend into the rest of the house. And whereas the historic preservation commission duly called a public hearing to consider the matter on April 28th, 2022, and whereas the necessary legal notice has been published and the required sign posted pursuant to town code, and whereas the public hearing was held and all persons having an interest in such matter having had an opportunity to be heard therein, and whereas the Historic Preservation Commission hereby determines that pursuant to the factors set forth in section 224-5 of the town code, that the proposed above described work to the subject property is consistent with the purposes of the town's historic preservation law and compatible with the property's historic character based upon its review of the application and documents on file and received at the public hearing and the testimony presented at the public hearing. It is hereby resolved that the Historic Preservation Commission hereby receives and files the above described application and all supporting documents. And it is further resolved that the Historic Preservation Commission hereby approves application 4H-02-22 for a certificate of appropriateness for the above described work to be performed at the property located at 1300 French Road in the town of Brighton, subject to the condition that the above described work be completed within one year from the date of this approval. Thank you, Ken. May I have someone put forth the motion, please? I'll make the motion, John Page. Thanks, John. Uh, second, please. Uh, this is Wayne. Second, Justin. Uh, thanks, Justin. Uh, any comments? <clears throat> no, good application, thanks. Is there anyone uh, here to speak on the application? Then I'd like to close the public hearings. Jeff, would you call for a vote? Ludwig? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Del Vecchio? Yes. Goodman? Yes. Whitaker? Yes. Page. Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you all. We have no hardship applications. Uh, public hearings are now closed. New business. Properties to be surveyed and updated. Uh, Mary Jo, I think uh, you'd like to speak on this. Um, if you would like me to, Jerry, um, I did some backgrounds work on <coughs> Council Rock Avenue. That's a, a Thomas W. Boyd Jr. design. <coughs> and, uh, uh, the, you've got the memo there that talks about J Jules and Marsha Weinstein Friedman, uh, as the first owners of the house. 
Um, and uh, um, out of the Council Rock uh, neighborhood. Arkansas. Council Rock uh, neighborhood began in 1924. It was the product of a man named Grafton Johnson, a person I hadn't heard of before, but he had uh, thousands of properties all over the United States. And uh, he developed land in Brighton from 1919 to 1929. Um, in this particular neighborhood, Council Rock Estates, there are restrictive covenants against the sale of property to a colored person. So you need to know about that. And I think it's kind of ironic that Thomas W. Boyd, an African-American, was chosen to design 321 for Rock Avenue. Yes. Uh, anyway, that's the background information that I've been able to uncover about that. I'm sure that if it does go for a full survey that uh, somebody will, will, will uncover perhaps more information, but I did want you to have that information. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Jo. Um, I included with that uh, memo, a copy of the ad. Um, again, I, I tried to get a better picture of it. This came from the Democrat and Chronicle of 1924. And uh, Gretchen asked me to try to translate the wording. Uh, I did the bottom three paragraphs, which uh, just talked about how nice the tract was. And there's the translation for you. But uh, it was just the, the Art Deco appearance of the ad, the 1924 look about it, that I thought was kind of interesting. Well, this Council Rock and Thackeray and Esplanade are just a treasure trove of mid-century houses. I, it's incredible. Yes. How many of them have retained their originality is also pretty spectacular. So I think this should certainly be on our short list of houses to uh, survey. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we do have also an old business, an upgraded uh, survey on uh, Marina Drive. But uh, do we want to put this on our to be surveyed list for uh, this year. Marina Rock has a full survey. Are you talking about 321 Council Rock? Yes. Yeah. With the eye towards uh, designation. Oh, Any thoughts? Anything, do Any? we know anything about the other Thomas Boyd property? 240 Thackeray Road? I haven't looked into that very closely, Amanda, but I will. Well, there's also one on uh, hibiscus, right? Um, yeah, there's a few on hibiscus we were looking at. A uh, Boyd's? I know the one, the one at, at 160 or 260 is a, I think, I'm pretty sure that one's a Boyd. And I believe 230 is too on hibiscus. I think Ken pointed that one out. Yeah, 230 um, is the one you were talking about, Jeff. Okay. Well, uh, when is our when is when do we need to make when do we need to make a decision on uh, what we're going to uh, ask for surveys on this year? Do we have a little time yet? You have uh, plenty of time, guys. Um, I just submitted uh, too fast the letter requesting that I could extend the contract with Burrow. So once that in place, you can start ordering up surveys. We still have some surveys that are being worked on by Chris uh, that um, I think we'll get here shortly. So you can work on those. But now you can start working on the surveys that we want to accomplish in uh, 2022. Very good. We do have a budget limitation. Oh, yes. We always yeah. do, David. Yes. <laughs> um, Well, let's, I guess the question is, do we proceed, uh, we can put 321 on, uh, certainly, and Mary Jo, maybe you could just do a little uh, digging on 230 hibiscus in the meantime, okay. but uh, one thing we do have to uh, look at, uh, is there any other new business, I guess, other than that? Um, 
No, I don't think so. Uh, if not, then uh, we do need to review uh, the revisions to 4, uh, 42 Verena Drive, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, uh, Chris Brandt revised, and uh, they're shown in uh, outlined in yellow on the uh, screen. And I guess we need to proceed with uh, sending the owners a, a letter on this if we if we decide we're going to proceed proceed um, with the Yeah, Jerry, at the last meeting, um, that was the decision of the commission. <clears throat> but I also, before I approach or have Jeff approach those owners on designation, I wanted to have the most updated survey. Right. Because that's what's going to be sent to them. I just want to make sure we're all comfortable with what's been revised. Um, I know that I am, but I need you guys to just to make sure. Because yes. it is a, an important distinction. I, and I do think it's the distinction uh, that you were trying to make. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. So. Um, if you could do that, then we can send out the, the, the letter, which we call the first letter, sure. telling them we're interested in um, uh, designation. Thanks, Ramsey. Uh, how does the commission feel? Are we all uh, in agreement that this is an appropriate revision? Yes. 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 Okay. Any other comments? Uh, okay. Thank you for verifying that. Then. Uh, Let's proceed with sending out the letter. You don't need a vote on that, do you, or do you? No, you did it last month. I just okay. wanted to make sure the wording was okay. Very good. Okay. Let's proceed with that. Any other old business? That's all we have on the agenda. Okay. Unless there are no other comments or concerns. Uh, may I entertain a motion to adjourn? Uh, before we do that, Jerry? Yes. I just want to, uh, since this is my last opportunity to publicly humiliate Ramsey. Um, <laughs> no, not, that's, that's not my purpose, actually. I really just want to say um, once again publicly, Ramsey, what a pleasure it has been working with you and how much I've learned from you. Um, and I have appreciated your directness, but also your grace and your um, humility, um, your wisdom, uh, of course, the depth of your knowledge. All of it has helped me do my job as town attorney um, so much better. And um, working with this board, particularly a board uh, that does business in an area that I knew nothing about when I came to this board, um, you have helped me tremendously uh, become comfortable with uh, preservation issues. And I actually very much enjoy working with this board. When I first started, I sort of feared working with this board because I was so ignorant. Uh, and, and the board is made up of so many knowledgeable people in this area and preeminent uh, in their field. And, and you really helped um, bridge that gap for me, Ramsey. So, so thank you for everything, of course, and particularly your help uh, to me uh, working for the Historic Preservation Commission over these years. And, and I, uh, I'll I'd second like, that. I'd I'll like to that. second that and also Ramsey uh, having uh, worked with you from the start. Um, we're going to miss you. Yes. And uh, I think Jeff is going to be, uh, have some pretty good shoes to fill, but uh, mm -hmm. I think Jeff will do fine. I think so too. Uh, we'll miss you, Ramsey. And uh, I, I want to thank everyone. Um, and I do want to say Jeff is going to do great because he's off to a good start. He um, has an aptitude for it. He wants to learn it. I did not know it either. It was because of this commission that you taught me a lot of things that I only studied when I was in graduate school. <laughs> I only knew your legal right to do what you wanted to do. Beyond that, I did not know. 
Um, I learned a lot and that's the important part of the job. I couldn't do it if I didn't have challenges of learning new things uh, to add to our community. Um, this is a big thing for me. And then um, you, I am you, saying goodbye. This is my, uh, my last one. Oh, Ram yeah. Ramsey, yeah. I, I might mention that uh, I believe your house is going to be up for designation next year. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate everyone, and I wish Ramsey, everyone the best. The Ramsey, best. I wanted, oh, sorry, I just wanted to say, after I left your, your uh, party, which I'm sorry I couldn't stay for, but um, when I was driving away, I just wanted to say that, you know, it, it struck me. I was, I was thinking over the, the past several years that I've been on this commission, and I've worked with a number of, of planners with towns both in New York and in Indiana. And, uh, you know, you really stand out as being, you know, the most professional and the most knowledgeable that I've worked with. And I wanted to say that when I left and I pulled out on Elmwood Avenue and started driving uh, through Brighton on my way back to the office, you know, I think you can, you can hold dear that you have such an impact. You've had such an impact on, on really the appearance of our town. And it's, it's one of those, you know, you're, you're one of those unsung heroes. And so, you know, just personally, um, I really appreciate all of the years that you've been really at this because it's made a tremendous, I think, difference in just the appearance of this town. So thanks, Ramsey. Thank you. That's great. So appreciate it. You have no idea. Ramsey, how many years have you had this job? 32. I was 39 wow. years old when I started. My That's son was not even born yet. My daughter was just a baby. Ah. And they're in their 30s now. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I was, a, I was a youngster, but I had some experience before I came, which was beneficial. Um, it was interesting. I started when I first came here. I didn't get the job originally, but I was able to pick up a job at MRB Group, and it's where I met Mike Dion. Mm. But then I left and we sat on opposition sides for years. He was always the applicant and I was always telling him what he had to do. Um, so it's been a while. It's, it's uh, 40 years uh, with me and my wife. Um, we're about to uh, retire together. She retires at the end of May. I'm looking very much forward to that. Um, we went to undergraduate school together, graduate school together. Uh, she was in law school, um, done a lot of great things, and we've worked so hard since we were kids <laughs> together, having a dream, and now we get to retire together. So I can't begin to tell you how happy I am and so proud to be included with everyone. Well, Ramsey, you've, you. uh, you've made it easy for us, and uh, yes, we wish you, uh, as we used to say in the Navy, fair seas and following winds. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, everyone. Okay, kids. Thank you all, and we'll see you next month. I did. I did interrupt your motion to adjourn, um, <laughs> oh, so you should probably we? finish that. I, I sort of made sure that nobody really well, did. Anybody make the motion, Jeff? I don't know. No. Yeah. All right, motion to adjourn, please. I'll make the um, motion, Jerry. Thank you. Second. Yes, second, please. Sir. Thank you, David. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Thank you, Ramsey. Thank you Everyone, night. good night. Bye, Ramsey. Thank you for everything. All your kind thoughts very much. Thank you. Hey, Ramsey and Jeff, are you guys staying on to chat here? Yeah, well, we yeah. do need to have a little wrap up.